Milling Through History presents Noah Webster. Noah Webster is known as the author of the dictionary and as a man who is responsible for creating so many words that many of us can thank him for vocabulary tests and definitions that we had to memorize growing up in school. However, many people might not know much about Noah Webster. He was born in Hartford, Connecticut on October the 16th, 1758. At the age of 16, he went to Yale University and would graduate from there in 1778. For several years, he spent trying to find himself in the form of teaching and also becoming a lawyer. However, he would discover that his true passion came with writing. By 1785, he had developed his very first speller, grammar book, and reader for elementary school children. It was also during this time that he believed American values were far superior to those than that were found in Europe. During the very early days of the Republic, Noah Webster was a Federalist and a very strong advocate for the Constitution. His views were so powerful that Alexander Hamilton would hire Webster on to become an editor for a Federalist Party newspaper. It was during this time of being an editor that Webster became extremely prolific by writing uh, political essays, publishing textbooks, writing up a report on infectious diseases, and creating several newspaper articles. It was also during this time that Webster would develop his blueback speller. For Noah Webster, the American elementary school system was highly, well, not that great. In fact, he found that teachers did a greater disservice to his students, mainly because they were not able to teach them appropriately. In developing the blueback speller, Webster was attempting to teach students the English language and have their lessons in this progress by their age. As a result, Webster has been seen as a pioneer of cognitive development. In 1806, Webster would publish his very first dictionary called A Compendious Dictionary of the English Language. The following year, he would begin to work on a fully comprehensive dictionary called An American Dictionary of the English Language. In order to make this particular piece of work successful, Webster would learn 28 different languages. And in doing so, he wanted to standardize American speech. The reason for this is that many people in the country oftentimes spelled, pronounced, and used English words very differently. His book would contain 70,000 words, 12,000 of which had never appeared in a dictionary before. In addition, Webster preferred to spell words which matched their pronunciations. As such, American spellings of words would oftentimes drop a U that would be found, for instance, in color or would change the word center from having R-E at the end to E-R. In 1828, the dictionary was published and its copyright was registered on April the 14th. Speaking of copyrights, Noah Webster was an instrumental force in getting the copyright to actually become a mainstream in the American system. In 1831, Webster successfully lobbied Congress to pass the Copyright Act of 1831 which helped to secure rights to authors and artists to produce new works and receive royalties for their efforts. Prior to this, if an author were to publish something, there's no promise that the publisher would actually give them what was rightfully theirs. Webster would begin to work on a second volume of his dictionary. However, in 1843, he passed away. And as such, his work, while almost completed, would then move would be obtained by a different group of people. The rights to the dictionary were acquired by George and Charles Merriam, and from that point forward, the dictionary referred to as the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, recognizing that no Webster had begun the process, but the Merriam brothers were the ones that finished it. To pay respects to Noah Webster, one should go to New Haven, Connecticut to visit his grave. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe for future episodes of Milling Through History, and be sure to leave comments below for future episode ideas, and be sure to take a look at our suggested reading page.